It is a huge honor today for me to uh, be podcast interviewing Dr. Nuno Sousa Diaz yeah. from yes, Portugal. Yeah. And um, this is a very brave for me to do a live interview with someone this tall, dark, and handsome. I'm going to be looking extra short, fat, and bald today. Um, it's probably, you obviously had a colleague in cosmetic dentistry being born this handsome, would you say? Okay. So we're, um, we're both lecturing today in um, SADA which stands for the uh, South African Dental Association yes. in Johannesburg. Yeah. Um, tell, um, tell everybody what your lecture was about today. What, you're an orthodontist. Well, uh, hello everyone from Dental Town. I'm an orthodontist. I'm here lecturing about adult patients and how the orthodontist can be an important member when we treat patients and how can we, together with the dentist, work for better final results. What I'm here doing is showing the dentists how they can benefit from the orthodontist work. So working together to achieve the best results. And what do you, um, what do you, I know a lot of orthodontists are um, not too pleased with a lot of results they see being done by general dentists. What, what are your views on general well, dentists doing orthodontics versus the orthodontist doing it? Well, my opinion about this subject is that to do orthodontics, to treat patients as an orthodontist, you need to get a special training. That takes time until you get to a point that you are able to treat a patient doing proper orthodontic treatment. What I see nowadays is more and more the, um, the dentists, they, they start to do some orthodontics. And in my opinion, this is wrong. Uh, I'm here giving the dentists enough knowledge to ask for an orthodontist and to benefit from his work, not for them to do orthodontics, because this we cannot teach in uh, one day. Okay, so this is my opinion about that. So what would you say to general dentists who see advertisements that believe with uh, some of these clear aligner companies hmm. that um, you know you just take the impression, send it to them, and they'll do all the diagnosing and treatment planning, they'll just send you the clear aligners, and you don't need to know all the orthodontics. What, what do you, what, well, do you, do you in see, my opinion, do you yes. see some of this marketing? I see, I see it's time more. And in my opinion, many treatments, many treatments with clear liners and Invisalign and all these uh, new systems, they are actually very easy. The difficult thing is to select the cases. And for this, you need an orthodontic, or orthodontic knowledge. So the problem is not treating the case. The problem is to select the case that will benefit from each system. And this you cannot teach in a certification course. So even the simple, the very simple treatment, they need the eye of the orthodontist to be able to select. So this is my opinion about this subject. Because because when you're a doctor, 99% of the game is the correct diagnosis and treatment plan. Sure. Not running off to drill, fill, and bill on the wrong tooth. Not in every case, especially the cases that I'm treating. I'm treating more adult and complex cases. It comes. Uh, the diagnosis is a very important step, but also the skills in order to treat this case, these cases and the cooperation between the team and also the understanding of the patient. Okay, well, help, help the general dentist, and, and we have a lot of hygienists watching our shows, oral health therapists, help, help them answer questions from the patients. Um, so you have, a, you don't do, let's say you're a general dentist, you don't do orthodontics, and a lady's sitting in a chair and she says, uh, well, I want to. I'll go to the orthodontist, but I only want the uh, the clear retainers. Well, how should a dentist respond to that? I mean, can can you always do it in clear retainers, or sometimes does it have to be fixed? You know, the correct answer for this: the dentists they need to say this subject needs to be checked with an orthodontist. They might have the knowledge to answer some questions about this, but if a patient asks, or the dentist comes directly to an orthodontist and asks about this for this specific patient or the patient should uh, search for an orthodontic opinion. This is my opinion about this. So you've, um, you you um, are from Portugal, you went to dental orthodontic school in uh, Tel Aviv, Israel, you're lecturing here in South Africa. Looking around the world, um, what percent of the ortho would you say today is clear aligner versus fixed? And where do you think that will be in 10 or 20 years? Is it? Is it going more towards removable clear aligners or is that more of a marketing phenomena? Is there still a massive place for fixed? Uh, well, I believe that is, there are places for both. There are patients that would definitely benefit from a clear aligner option and there are patients that 
clear aligner option is not an option. So we need to look at the patient individually. I know that you are asking me for the numbers. I cannot tell you about my experience because, as I said, I deal with more complex cases. So the cases that would benefit from aligners, they are not so much. We really need to go through proper uh, orthodontic treatment with uh, more complex mechanics. But uh, as I see today, more and more um, cases are getting treated with aligners. And this is also bringing some new features to the softwares and to the, the, um, the companies that they develop this. And, uh, and this would improve the systems, even if I believe it will not get to the standard of treating patients with regular brackets. Okay, I want you to help a dentist answer this question to mom and dad, because we hear this question a lot, not so much from mom, but we hear it a lot from dads. It says, um, look, um, you know, this is all just cosmetic. This isn't has anything to do with health or being a doctor. Um, you know, a third of America is overweight. Okay, her teeth are crowded, but it's just cosmetic. My daughter doesn't need ortho. Um, is orthodontics pretty much cosmetic, or do you think there's health benefits for why a teenager with crooked teeth should get orthodontics? Definitely that we should look at it as a health benefit. I believe that the aesthetics will come as a benefit, okay? But the main issue when we treat a patient, we are doctors, we are not cosmeticians. So we need to look at the malocclusion in order to improve, in order to give better function, in order to improve all the health of the patient. And of course, aesthetics comes together with this. So we should look at the patient as a doctor, as we are. So we should be very cautious and not giving sometimes to the patient what they want because they don't remember health until they need. So they only need aesthetics and they just want fast and everything. So it's in our role to say no, or we treat the way we believe is the proper way or please search for someone else. This is the way I think it should be and this is the way I try to be. Um, another question I'm wondering, um, I got out of school in 87, now it's 2016, so I've been doing this uh, almost 30 years. It seems like 30 years ago there was talk about um, braces on the lingual inside and you always kind of hear about it but it never really it seems like it never really took off I mean it seems like I hear about it as much as I did 30 years ago as I did today is lingual braces um, so, some people think it's a new thing it's not a new thing but what, what are your thoughts on lingual braces? do you think it has a place is it growing in market share because a lot of the clear aligner is they just don't want you to show the braces so putting them on the inside wouldn't that solve the whole deal? Well, there is a problem with putting them from the inside. Lingual orthodontics is a little bit different from buccal orthodontics in terms of um, skills as well. So I'm a big fan of lingual orthodontics and I believe that it will grow more and more and the patients can benefit very much from this, but the time for the orthodontist to work on the patient is much longer than to work on a patient with uh, buccal brackets. So, and this makes the price to go higher. So if the patients are able to pay for this difference, I believe that they, in almost all the malocclusions, they can be treated with lingual orthodontics. The problem is that to treat uh, with these customized systems, we don't have the freedom to change things in the middle. It's not so easy as with the regular buccal brackets. And in very complex cases, mainly orthoperio cases, that we don't really know what will be the final. We will work on it until we get there. This kind of systems, I don't see a benefit. I believe that regular brackets would be beneficial when we have very complex cases. Because let's say a patient that we have a tooth that we might lose during the treatment because of perio issue. If we have these customized systems, we might be not able to achieve what we were planning from before. And if we have just regular brackets, we can change according to the situation at the moment. So there are advantages and disadvantages in every system. Uh, and we just need to use our orthodontic knowledge to select the best system for the indicated patient. And sometimes in the same patient, we can take advantage of two different systems. So this is the reason that I believe that the dentist is not able to do proper orthodontics 
even if in some cases they will, because they are lucky, because they found the system for this right patient by luck. So this is my opinion. Um, I want to ask you another um, question. Um, a lot of times the child does not want braces, but mom wants braces. Mom sees the, the malocclusion, and so little Billy's going to get braces. But little Billy's not into cosmetics, and he's not really into home care. And then two years later, when we take off the braces, there's demineralization around his teeth, and then mom's upset about that. Do you sometimes see the boy who's got his hairs matted up, he's worn the same short three days in a row, you don't think he's got good home care? Do you sometimes treat them with uh, removable clear liners just because that might be easier for home care, or yep. do you switch them to a from an over-the-counter toothpaste of 1,000 part per million to five, well, how, do, how do you handle that case? Yeah, I handle this way. In my opinion, orthodontic treatment is not suitable for every patient. If the patient doesn't want, just because the mother wants, I don't treat. This is how I see. In terms of um, not just compliance, but also in the aesthetic demands, I have been facing that the Adolescents, they want more and more clear brackets. They are aware of the aesthetics and how they look with the brackets, okay? So if there is a patient that doesn't want treatment at all, as you said, I don't treat this patient, even if the parents want. I don't change the system according to if the patient is cooperative or not. But what I see, each time more, I'm using the Clarity Advanced uh, from 3M, the brackets, the um, clear one, and the patients, they can change the elastics and they like how it looks with the, cl the clear bracket. So I believe the future, the young patients, the adolescents, they come more with more understanding about the treatment. They request some specific things. It's not this kind of patient that I don't want, I'm here because of my mom. This is uh, my experience. And if we have a patient like this, I don't treat. And there is no reason to have the demineralization around the brackets because if the patient is not following oral hygiene instructions and the periodontist or oral hygiene is not taking care of this, I take the brackets off and the treatment is finished. We need to be very strict with this. We are still on command and not the patient. We, we need to be strict on these things. So um, what are you passionate about at Orthodontics? Why? Why did you, um, when you, you know, every orthodontist is a dentist first, why did you go on to become an orthodontist and say not an endodontist or an oral surgeon? Uh, and what, what, was, what drove you into orthodontics and what's got you passionate about it today? I mean, why do you like orthodontics? Well, orthodontics for me at the moment um, brings me enthusiasm because we look at the patient as a whole. We when the patient gets into the office, we look at the face and we orthodontists have the knowledge how the face grows, what should be the correct angle, angles and all this. So we look at the face and we know what is possible to do to improve this face. And after we go to the smile and only after we go to the teeth. And it's important to, to, to make this sentence very strong because Many dentists, they still believe that the orthodontist is just looking to study models and to malocclusion and class one molar relationship. This is wrong. When we look at the patient, even before we look at the teeth, we are already using the knowledge that we got during our orthodontic education about growth, about development, about all this, in order to give the patient the best from not only smile aesthetics, but also from facial aesthetics. Okay, so this is what brought me into orthodontics as a passion and as something that I will be satisfied making someone looking much better and changing their uh, whole life or improving their uh, daily life by achieving some goals. I went to an orthodontist and he told me if I wanted to look better, I should put a sack over my head. Or I should turn out the lights. You said, what, do, those are your no, two options. I, I don't think you do. You look um, very nice. Do you, do you think, there's a, um, do you think th um, there's a place for Botox and derma fillers in orthodontic practices? Definitely. I'm a big fan of plastic surgery. But what I see 
is that the plastic surgery, sometimes it comes before the orthodontics and it's wrong. Many things that we can improve with orthodontics, just working with biology without any artificial things. Uh, nowadays, because patients want things fast, they are done with this plastic surgery. In many cases, after we do the proper orthodontic treatment, in some of them, of course, there is a need to improve with a plastic surgery. I agree, do but you, not do from you, before. Do you do some of the Botox and Derma filler? No, or do you, no. You use I, refer, I refer the patients, mm -hmm. um, but I have the understanding of the, the aesthetics. So if I see a patient that I improve the smile by placing the teeth in the right uh, place, and I see that, for example, the, there is a non-proportional size of the upper and the lower lip, for example, it's of course is a patient that might benefit from uh, from Botox or some other uh, intervention, some other uh, surgical intervention, but not before because this sometimes they try to correct something, but it's and if the orthodontic orthodontist comes comes after the plastic surgery many times is really unpredictable what we will get in terms of final result are you um what are your thoughts on uh, using orthognathic surgery for some cases well i know that uh, according to the country um we we the mentality is very different um for us i i don't follow um i don't follow numbers when i decide if the patient should go for orthognathic surgery or not. There are some patients that we look at them and they are extreme cases and it's straightforward, no problem. It's a case that will benefit from orthognathic surgery. Many of them, when they are borderline cases, I like to understand the patient needs, the patient desire, and if I can give the patient something very close to what we would get from uh, orthognathic surgery, I will suggest this. I don't, I'm not against orthognathic surgery. It's definitely something that it's benefiting, is benefit for, for, uh, beneficial for the patient. But I always try to look at the patient individual. I don't look at the cephalometrics and if there is two or three degrees or millimeters different, we should go for orthognathic surgery. I'm not from this opinion. I look at the patient and my feeling about aesthetics will tell me what uh, if this is a patient that will really benefit or not i hear um it's it's funny how uh, cultures and customs are so silly um i hear some uh teenage girls don't want clear aligners because they want the color they want to change the color rubber bands do you ever have that uh have you ever heard yeah, that as i told you many patients they ask for the clarity advanced brackets they want invisible brackets because the colors they look nice when the the brackets are like this so sometimes we, we think that if we eliminate the elastics with the self-ligating brackets, we are doing some big things. And on the contrary, we see children asking for this. So. Oh, I didn't, yeah. So self-ligating brackets, there'd be no rubber band. So that, so then these teenage girls would not like that. Yeah. So um, has, um, do you think that um, three-dimensional CBCT uh, radiographs have changed orthodontics are do you think most orthodontics is fine with two-dimensional uh, pan OCEF, or do you think three-dimensional CBCT was a game-changer well you know orthodontics is a specialty that has already that many years and we see beautiful cases without any of this technology this is a fact in my opinion the CBCTs they came to stay and we will definitely benefit from the information that they are bringing us. So we cannot use the excuse that we don't have a CBCT to do a bad orthodontics because we have two-dimensional, because it's possible to do very nice work with two-dimensional, but the CBCT is definitely bringing a lot more to the profession. And um, I believe that if we have the chance to have a CBCT from before, the patient will benefit even if it's a little bit more radiation all this I believe if the patient is not such a straightforward case we should do it um, I want you to help the general dentist with a diagnosing and treatment planning question sometimes you see a uh, child come in 
and there's no permanent tooth behind a baby uh, second, uh, second molar. Uh, some dentists believe that that tooth is going to fall out anyway, so you should pull it and go forward. Some people believe that if you don't pull the tooth, it stay in there forever. What do you? What is your? How? How do you think when you see a 14-year-old um, kid with no permanent tooth behind a second uh, baby tooth? Well, molar? this is. Um, we have to look at each case individually, but when I discuss this with the parents, I first make sure that the parents understand what we have at the moment. We have a patient that has a missing tooth, missing permanent tooth, and has a deciduous tooth there. If they ask me for how long this tooth will stay there, we have to be honest. We say maybe in two weeks will fall, maybe it will stay very long. We don't know. What we know is that we should take advantage of the age and if we need to, for example, to bring the molar forward in order to close the space, in my opinion, we should extract the milk, the deciduous tooth, and with the right mechanics, start this correction. If we see that for this patient is beneficial to leave the space for a future implant, we can also do the same, we leave the space, and when the patient has enough age to get the implant there, it's also another option. But every decision, it depends on the patient is individually okay so I what makes me decide sometimes is the the way that the parents look at it I have cases that parents they say I don't want an implant in my child even if I tell them this is the best option and I explain okay so let's maybe drag this molar forward the treatment will take longer but this is also possible so everything is possible if we have the parents or the patient with us and if they understand what we do. Sometimes it takes longer, sometimes it's faster, but we just need to be serious with them and we should do proper work and that's it. It's quite simple. You are so fun and informative to talk to. Is there any, anything else that you're passionate about? Anything else you want to talk about? Any, what, anything, uh, anything new in ortho? I'm excited about everything in orthodontics. Uh, I don't see something new coming that will make a big difference. They change, they come with new systems, they come with short smile, they come with this and that. I see this uh, world of potential for the profession, but the main passion, it doesn't come from the systems or appliances that we use. My passion comes from the ability we have working with biology to change function and to improve function and to change aesthetics for the best. Doesn't matter if it's with a regular bracket or with the self-ligating or with a lingual customized bracket. What matters is what we can get as a final result. Everybody, uh, everybody in the room was ranting and raving about the cases and slides you were showing. I was wondering, do you think uh, Dental Town or Ortho Town would ever uh, be graced with the honor of having an online course from you? Yeah, sure, why not? I, I will, according to what you will tell me or whatever you need, I will try to set a presentation that will be beneficial for the dentists in order to understand how they can benefit from the orthodontic work. Again, I'm not teaching dentists to do orthodontics. And then if you want to, you could create a different course for the uh, orthodontists on Orthotown. If you ever want to create a course for those guys, they would, Why they would love that. And I, and I also think, um, I also firmly believe that um, dentistry is done a little differently as you go around the world. So um, I would love to see a course from someone from uh, Europe. Um, I know. Uh, you know, Japan does things very differently than the United States, and I always think that um, it's uh, it's always so fun to have courses with different flavors from around the world because sure. everybody has a little spin, and you're definitely an international man. So we would uh, we would love to have it. To, it will be my pl my pleasure to do that. Well, thanks for uh, spending a half hour with me at the Sada meeting. Thank you very much.